And welcome back to the Molly and Kara show <laughs> where we're, yay, jazz hands. Uh, where we're sharing our thoughts for business leaders, managers, people dealing with this COVID-19 crisis, um, especially HR leaders and HR managers that are trying to navigate the compliance and the people side of all of this. Uh, something that has really come to mind for Molly and I that we've been thinking a lot about and talking with a lot of leaders about is when we come out of this, okay, so we're we're for some of us still in the nightmare rescheduling and reworking and everything, others have gotten to a controlled chaos situation. Um, and then others, you know, there's still a, a group of some folks that are in a business near usual type of situation. They just might be working from home or maybe they were already working from home, you know, that type of stuff. So there's, there's a whole spectrum of what's going on out there. But when we, come out of this when the government gives us the go ahead molly to flip that switch as i think you've described it to me um what do you think that's going to look like and and is it really going to be a flip of a switch or is it going to be like a slow trickle back um into society or what and, and of course we're just projecting here right you guys we're not <laughs> we're not psychics or anything like that yeah yeah but uh but what do you think is is going to happen with retailers, manufacturers, you know, the, the nine to five desk jobs. What are some of the things you see that are happening? And, um, and then describe that first, and then maybe we'll talk about some things we can do to prepare for that. Well, I definitely think from a workforce in general perspective, the way that you're managing in the chaos and, and pandemic now the people that you're maybe having to lay off or furlough or however that looks and in the hopes that they're all coming back, right? Um, that's speculative, right? The way that you're managing them and leading them through this is going to have a huge impact on your employer branding overall. So talking about when this is over, let's just say my magic eight ball says June 1st, May 31st, we're no, June 1st, we're, we're a go. I absolutely think it's going to be a light switch. As fast as it was shut off mid-March, it's going to be just as fast to shoot back on. So when you think about what that means in recruiting, let's say you had to lay off 100 people. How are you going to rehire 100 people in 24 hours? And what if those aren't the same 100 people? Right. What if you've only got half of those that are coming back with the experience, but the other 50 are brand new. Who's going to train them? Who's going to onboard them? Well, where's that orientation going to come from and who's going to do that? So I do, Kara, I think that it's going to be that light switch. Um, what do you think? Do you think it'll be the light switch too? You know, I think it's, I think it's going to vary by industry. So That's when I think point. about when I think about retail, as soon as they say retailers can open back up, I think they're going to flip that switch and they will be back open. You know, I think as soon as dentist offices and places like that, you know, the hair salons, as soon as they can get back to work and some of those places, they're going to be slammed. I mean, dentist appointments that are getting pushed back. Now they've got three or four months of people to see as soon as possible. Same with hairstylists. Come on now. <laughs> you know, everybody's going to be chomping at the bit to get an appointment. Um, when, when they're allowed to come back. So I do think for some industries, it's going to be like that. I think for some other industries, more of maybe the service industries and things, I don't know that everybody's going to be jumping in to buy, to buy things and to sign contracts and to do more business with people yet because so many businesses were financially impacted that their budgets have been cut, their you know ancillary stuff, their extra things have been cut. And so I believe that small businesses, especially if they're more service-based, for example, it's going to be a little bit slower getting back in. It's not that they... I, I mean, my business personally, I'd love a light switch flip, <laughs> you know, when, when everybody comes back, I'd love to have all kinds of contracts all of a sudden for more training. But the reality is we're going to have to go see where those clients and prospects are and figure out some new ways to deliver to them. If they're worried about travel for a while, if they're worried about groups, you know, conferences and things like that, we're having to pivot those kind of things. So I do think we're going to see a recruiting 
frenzy, particularly in the lower wage workforce, in the hourly workforce space. I think in that space, it is going to be a free for all. So for anybody who's managing, owning businesses, leading in that space, you've got to come up with your recruiting and onboarding and training plan now because it's going to happen in a way right molly that they've never done before you know usually they're hiring one or two or ten people at a time and they will be hiring five to ten times what they normally hire at any given time and trying to bring them in through cohort style you know type of thing right and and if you've got folks that were not employed before you know kind of like i said if you have to hire 100 people 50 were from are familiar with your brand and your industry and 50 your brain new you if you laid them off you have to rehire them that means yeah. everything that means their job code their application their reference checks their drug test their background check oh. their, all of their new hire paperwork the i9 talk about a compliance nightmare and and you're not even you haven't even started that that's just to get them on payroll right so right w- when you think about not to say overwhelming because you know it's all manageable in, in terms but if you have to hire 100 people at the same time within two weeks how do you do that mm-hmm. how do you absorb everything that has to get entered into the system if you don't have a software program that allows you to do it electronically where does all this stuff go and who are the hands that are going to manage it? Making sure that people right. are understanding what their schedule is, what the employee handbook is. Oh, and let's backtrack. Did you change your employee handbook to reflect the changes <laughs> that you had to make during the last 90 days? So, right. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I, as you were thinking, Molly, or sorry, as you were talking, I was thinking that it may actually be better for them to do it in a little bit of waves. So, for example, if I let my administrative staff go, I can't just tell everybody, all right, we've been given permission to open June 1st, so everybody's starting on June 1st. We we can't do that. We probably need to bring back the administrative folks first that are going to help us process all of this and help us get that stuff in place and then do maybe the first wave of everybody who wants their job back that has already worked here come on back and, and let's get them onboarded through like a mini onboarding process because you already know the equipment the job the you know your passwords and and that type of stuff and then do the recruiting wave of the new hires and anytime we talk about onboarding and we teach that to managers who by the way onboarding is not just the company's responsibility it's not just the corporate the compliance part it really is each manager's job to get that person right i know so (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> so crazy to think that, but no, Molly's, Molly's throwing her hands up because she agrees, but sees it all the time that the managers don't know how to onboard their people, right? So yeah, we, we teach them that you've got to think about day one, week one, month one, and quarter one, because it isn't just, oh, come in and sign all your paperwork and check, 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 you know, watch terrible e-learning and then get to work, right? It's not just that. A lot of it is the mentoring, the hand-holding, the shadowing, um, the questions, the building, team building, you know, camaraderie and trust with folks, telling them about the history of the organization. I fear, and Molly, I would love to get your thoughts. I fear that when people do flip that switch and they start to bring in a bunch of people, they're going to go back to the compliance-based onboarding and think, I don't have time to cover our history and our culture and our mission and vision and values. and I don't have time for that. i got to get people back on the floor, right? And we see that come back to bite employers who do that because then there's no loyalty, no camaraderie, no sense of obligation to the mission or anything else. So, so what do you think about onboarding and what are you, what have you seen and what do you project or forecast will happen? Well, first let me acknowledge the really cool part of just this conversation in and of itself, you know, thinking about what a recruiting frenzy would look like and bringing everybody back to work and making that plan and you acknowledging to say, you know what, maybe this needs to be in phases. You know, my mind wasn't even there, but having the open conversation with you and planning that out, 
it's going to go much smoother if you allow that to open up, right? So just to acknowledge that. So good job. Um, but yeah. secondly, just to think through what that onboarding means to employees that are coming back and new employees. If you bring somebody in and you push them through the process that first day, and let's say your orientation normally takes eight hours and you push people through in a two hour session. Oof. Not only does that person not feel rainbows and butterflies, but they're definitely <laughs> not gonna feel it. <laughs> because when people start to find out, let's say that June 1st is the magic day, when people start to acknowledge that, people are gonna start applying for jobs. How many jobs do you think they're gonna apply for at one time? Several. Oh, tons. Yeah. Tons. Absolutely. So, yep. They go through the hiring process, they get the job, they start June 6th. Let's say that that's the day. Well, how many more calls do you think they're going to get between then ding, and Ding, 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 ding. Yep. And if I'm not feeling loved and rainbows and butterflies and this is what you can do for me and this is how my experience can be of value to you, they're not going to stay. So then you're going to have a retention yeah. problem. So yeah. Sticking with the orientation, the onboarding, the mentorship program, training and development, and having that true plan, yes, it's going to be painful because it's going to take some time. Yes, you're going to have to pay attention to those individuals and give them more love than maybe you did six months ago. Yes, you're going to have to go through the full training, make those I's dotted and those T's crossed because it may hurt now. But in three to six yeah. months, you're not going to be repeating this cycle. Right. Absolutely. And, you know, I was just thinking, well, we've been running this series of magnet webinars, uh, M-A-G-N-E-T are our retention strategies that we do. If you go to magnetwebinars.com, we have a session, a free webinar. These have already been done and now recorded, but um, we have one on recruiting strategies and how to expedite your recruiting process and things like that. And then we also have one called guidance upon entry, which is our onboarding module. So just a free gift, free tool out there for you guys. They're each maybe 20 to 40 minutes long, but it has very specific strategies of how to prep for better onboarding, how to prep for better uh, recruiting, because we talk about exactly that Molly, that if they apply for you, they've applied to a bunch of other places yes. and who's going to be the biggest flight risk, not the ones who used to work for you and came straight back. They won't be as big of a flight risk as the ones who ch came to you first, but then they're getting other calls and other offers. So absolutely, we have to be so careful and amazing um, that we need them to realize they picked the right place to go to when right. they make this transition somewhere else. We don't want folks to pick it just because you were the fastest to hire, right. like it was their first opportunity. You want it to be that that's where they really wanted to work and they are so glad that they, that they picked that. Right. Um, so yeah, that it's so different. What about, um, with the folks, maybe not the hourly folks, but the, the more white collar, like, you know, behind a desk, nine to five type folks, what do you see the, the recruiting situation being like, you know, this summer for, for that type of group? Do you think people are going to be job hopping? Is there any strategies for, for companies to attract and retain those folks right out the gate? Absolutely. If, if I feel like I was done wrong or had a bad boss um, yes. and that exit for me was not pleasant, it's mm -hmm. a prime time for me to find somewhere else. And yep. from the employer's perspective too, employers need to be thinking about that from an employer branding perspective. You know, if you know that you um, have a great team and you made a great plan and you've got the next 60, 30, 60 days planned out and you know that talent is out there, you are set up for prime picking if you will. Mm -hmm. It's going to be an awesome opportunity for those employers that are really taking advantage of this time, taking the time to break down communication walls, build those teams, even if it's with 25 hours a week, even if it's those, those lesson times, but they're still allowing people 
It's, it's about the product result. It's not about the hours you're working right now. I know you've got kids at home. I know that this is different and a struggle for you. Those employers that are being different, they need mm -hmm. to share that. You yeah. know, we, we, we've got a, an employer that we're working with and they're taking care of childcare for their employees that need it. They're an essential business and they're taking care of that childcare, paying for that childcare. Like we need wow. boasting this out everywhere. Um, yeah. Those are the ones that are the rock stars that are going to win that talent that know and see the difference. And it's a total compensation, not a baseline salary, right? Yes, absolutely. That's a great, great comment to end on there. It's the total package and not just their, not just their salary or their wages and things like that. What all can you offer people? Because that other stuff matters more than ever right now, including yes. training and mentoring and, you know, advancement opportunities of, of just learning and growing and things like that. So great. Well, excellent conversation again, yes. Molly. Uh, thanks for talking with me about this recruiting frenzy that we're like to see, likely to see in several industries. And I wish everybody happy, times happy mental thoughts happy health happy as happy as you can be <laughs> in this situation yes just breathe we're all in this together we're going to get through this um, and please let us know if you have any other questions you want us to answer or talk about um, don't hesitate to message in to me or molly and we're here with you and for you yes. and have a wonderful day all right thanks for being with us bye. again bye-bye